my name is Vesa Ivan, and I'm a principal program manager in the OneDrive SharePoint team, which is a joint engineering effort. Um, I'm also responsible of our open source and community engagement, so making sure that our customers and partners understand how to do extensibility in Microsoft 365 in general or in the SharePoint and OneDrive um, area. And obviously that includes Graph and everything else what we do in this uh, side. Now, in SharePoint side of the house, we've been uh, using the, our latest extensibility model, which is SharePoint Framework, for a while. Um, and SharePoint Framework was released almost three years ago, and it has been widely successful uh, in the cloud. And it's designed for a UX layer extensibility. So basically, if you want to modify and create a widget on a SharePoint, or want to create a widget in Microsoft Teams, or nowadays, if you want to create a widget or functionality or a solution, also in Office settings, you can actually take advantage of SharePoint framework. Now, why on earth will I would actually do that would be the, probably the first question if you're not familiar with SharePoint framework. So let's actually start with that one uh, quickly. So first of all, um, if you're not familiar what is a SharePoint framework and how these things work, uh, obviously I will show you some resources and a live demo in a second. But the beauty of SharePoint framework is that we take care of the hosting. So number one challenge, what Office add-ins developers kept on saying, and enterprise developers who were planning to do an enterprise extensibility for their customers were saying that, well, it always gets complicated because somebody needs to host my extensibility, my web application. I need to create an Azure application. And when I go and request an Azure application for my customer, enterprise customer, it takes ages to get that. And all of those permissions and everything else, it's really, really difficult. With SharePoint Framework and Office add-ins development, all of this is automatic. You don't actually have to worry about hosting because everything is hosted for you automatically. So your code is being hosted uh, by us, which is a great thing because you will save money. Now, the second really uh, good thing is that uh, authentication. So authentication uh, with SharePoint Framework and Office Science, it just works. You don't need to do anything related on your code. Um, the authentication just works automatically. So there's a single sign-on, you're authenticated with Microsoft 365 or Office 365 identity, and you are good to go. Now, the code maintenance is a good thing as well. So the same code can work across SharePoint, Microsoft Teams, and Office. Exactly the same code. You don't have to do any changes within your code, except unless you want to access something as a service or application specific. For example, using the Office JavaScript SDK, then you obviously use the Office JavaScript SDK, which is given to you easily within the code as well. And I'll show you that one in a second as well. But you can basically, the baseline component and baseline implementation and solution is exactly the same. So you can reuse the same piece of code, which is super, super important. The skills reuse, super important thing. You don't actually have to learn at anything specific uh, if you're developing anything for these three different applications. So it's the same tool set. It's the same human generator. It's the same APIs. It's the same, same TypeScript version. It's the same extensibility model, which we're taking advantage. So you can actually build on top of your existing skill set. Uh, the deployment is super easy. Uh, you basically uh, have automatic hosting, and you can want this one way of deploying uh, Office settings, Microsoft Teams tabs, or SharePoint framework web parts as well. Now, we're also looking into having a more consistent and let's say more wider Microsoft 365 developer story. And this is something which is coming slightly later. So sooner or later, you don't actually use SharePoint framework to create Office sentence. You use Microsoft 365 framework or whatever it will be called. Um, even in Ignite, we, we kind of said, we didn't say out loud what it will be called because it's a marketing decision, but there will be a one unified Microsoft 365, is it a component or an application platform? We can actually then say that, hey, I want to have a component. And with that component, you can define where it's going to be hosted. It's going to be hosted in Office Ad as an Office settings or as a Microsoft Teams tab or as a SharePoint framework report. And the governance, so you can have a one centralized uh, uh, centralized management uh, of the, the covenants as well. So managing all of your applications in a single location. This comes uh, with a unified app catalog, which is in development and not yet available. And then cross-platform support in the office uh, using the same SharePoint framework web part or your office settings uh, across the Windows, Excel, PowerPoint, and Office uh, across all of the different uh, platforms as well. Again, same piece of code, which is a super, super important thing. So those three uh, things are coming. They're not yet available. Technically, the whole implementing Office settings using SharePoint Framework is in preview. So we released it actually to preview yesterday. So this is super, super new stuff uh, for you to take advantage. We did show it in Ignite already. So you might have actually seen some of the videos. Now, 
the longer term vision, what we want to do with Microsoft 365 platform is really to come up with a one unified way of doing extensibility. Obviously, um, it, it's a complex platform and obviously behind of the scenes, we're using Microsoft Craft APIs because that gives you the contextual personalized access to the relevant information. And then you can use the specific APIs and SDKs for the service what you're using. But the whole idea of this longer term vision is to have a one yo at Microsoft 365 where you can actually then create your application or your widget or a solution, which then you can define where it's going to be hosted when it kind of be surfaced. So you don't actually, again, need to have specific knowledge of a, a, a specific application. And sure, if you're implementing an Excel-based extensibility, you will take advantage of Excel JavaScript SDK, and it has its own specific things to make happen. But the actual widget, the implementation of the style, is the same across the Microsoft 365. And that's the vision where we're heading gradually. This will take a while still uh, to get there, uh, but this was already presented in the Ignite, Ignite 2019 in November in Orlando a few months ago. But that gives you a scene where we are heading. Now, like I said yesterday, we released the preview version uh, of Office add-ins built with SharePoint Framework. And even that sounds really weird, by the way, uh, creating Office add-ins using SharePoint Framework. Why would you use SharePoint Framework to create Office add-ins? Well, that's precisely the reason why we are renaming all of this stuff as a unified platform sooner or later. But for now, what we're actually doing is that we are building a SharePoint Framework web part during the preview timeframe. We have a SharePoint Framework web part together with Office Context, and we have the Office Manifest, and we're using site loading during preview of time frame, and that actually is the Outlook Web Access application, so Outlook Web Access add-in, which you can then take advantage within your Outlook Web Access. This is the preview time frame, and we're looking into extending this then to cross all of the other applications as well. So Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and all of that work is being done already uh, or being actively worked on. So let's have a look on this one in practice. So what does it actually mean that you build using a one specific tooling and you target uh, either web part or a SharePoint or a Teams or an Office add-ins? And what does it mean that I can access the Office uh, JavaScript SDK within my code? Let me jump uh, first uh, on the commander. So let's actually have a look on how do we create this. So um, if you are familiar with SharePoint Framework, and uh, then it might be super familiar what I'm doing here, but let's actually have a look on what we're doing. So first of all, uh, we are using the SharePoint Framework Yeoman Generator. Like I said, for now, sooner or later, there's going to be Microsoft 365 Yeoman Generator, which we use for generating the UX layer for extensibility. And because this is a preview capability, um, we're going to do, before I go to the, to the command line, let me recap slightly. Uh, you can find the documentation in AKMS SPFX uh, is the, actually the, the URL. AKMS SPFX is the easiest way to find uh, the relevant documentation. And that's a really easy thing to remember as well. SPFX meaning uh, SharePoint Framework. From here, uh, I can search for uh, Office, uh, Office add-in or Office, and we can actually find uh, the building Office add-in using SharePoint Framework. And that's basically then the tutorial, which we kind of take advantage uh, in this uh, in this uh, quick demo as well. So we're going to use the Yeoman generator, and we're going to use the plus beta command uh, behind of it. So let me actually get back on the command line uh, and do the plus beta. And I'll do skip uh, install here, which basically means that I'm not going to run the Yeoman, uh, sorry, the NPM install, which will save some time for showing you what we actually get for executing the Yeoman generator. So our Yeoman generator in the SharePoint framework is first going to ask what's the solution name. So Outlook demo is fine. We're going to target SharePoint online for now. Like I said, for now, this is quite SharePoint specific questions, uh, but all of this is going to be changed in the future. Use a current folder. Do we want to allow tenant admin to deploy stuff uh, immediately across the tenant? Yes. Do we want to have a specific permissions? No. We're going to target a web part for now, and we're going to call it Outlook uh, demo. And description is fine. Uh, do we want to use React Knockout? Well, for now, let's not use uh, any JavaScript framework. And there we go. The Yeoman generator has created us the solution without Node uh, modules folder. So quickly having a look on what actually happens here is that we give you a web part solution uh, and web part baseline solution. And we also give you, which is basically ready to go as a starting point. And we also give you a manifest file, which is ready to go to get hosted in the Outlook web access. So you can easily get started on <laughs> testing things because everything what you need is available in here. So 
I'm not going to actually cap uh, package this one. I'm going to close this one. I'm going to use another solution which I created earlier because I wanted to save some time for not actually uh, installing uh, the node modules. And that's the one, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that is the one. So this is a solution which I created earlier uh, where we actually have an access already to the office um, office context. And the, accessing the office context is nothing more than in the web part or in the panel implementation. I do this dot context dot SDKs. And from here, again, depending where to the panel or a widget or an application, whatever we want to call this um, in the future, uh, if it's actually hosted in Office, and that Office context is then available. And from the Office context, I can actually access uh, something like mailbox and, and mails and messages and all of that, whatever is the, the API, what you need to access on. Now, I can then use this uh, context to figure out, uh, am I actually in Office or am I in SharePoint? So I can use the, exactly the same piece of code as an Office add-in or as a SharePoint framework or as a Teams tab as well, if you prefer to do that. So in this case, we're just going to basically output a message uh, depending on the fact that are we in SharePoint or are we in Office. So quick, let's quickly actually walk this through because this is super, super cool because all of the hosting, deployment, everything else is super streamlined for you. So let me actually do carp package and I'm going to do carp package ship, which basically means that I'm packaging my TypeScript solution uh, as an SPPKG or ready to be packaged as an SPPKG file. If you're familiar with SharePoint framework, that might be useful. So I'm going to do GARP bundle, that's the ship, which is going to actually prep the package and prep uh, the TypeScript uh, to a JavaScript format. And there we go. Um, and then it's ready to get actually packaged. And the beauty of the SharePoint framework solution model really is the fact that we can actually package our solution as an individual solution file, which actually contains all of the assets, images, JavaScript files, all of the other assets as well. And that's actually being done by using, and, and the rules of that is being controlled by the package solution JSON file. You can even ask Microsoft Craft permissions. So nobody needs to go to Azure AD and create an application and grant permissions and go through all of that burden in the enterprise development process uh, to get those permission credits. Uh, you don't actually need to go to Azure AD at all. You just request the permissions and the tenant administrator of the office tenant can grant the permissions in this uh, for your application. Quite streamlined experience. Now, let me actually do a package solution as well. So I'm going to actually package the solution. It's going to not going to take too long and uh, that we actually get uh, stuff created. And let me actually open up uh, that uh, solution. So here's my solution. We can actually see I'm located in Finland. It's 6.31 uh, right now in the Finnish time frame. So uh, let me actually go to my tenant. Uh, what are we going to, how are we going to install this uh, to my tenant? Uh, right now it is still using the SharePoint app catalog. Again, we're working on a unified app catalog experience in a tenant level that's coming sooner or later this year as well. And I'm installing the solution to my tenant and it's going to actually ask some permission it's going to ask them, uh, do some notes related to Minecraft permissions, uh, which, which the solution is requesting to get a permissions as well. I'm not actually using those in the sample, so I don't need to grant those per the permissions as such. But now, there we go, our solution is being uh, hosted. What's really cool about this model, again, if you're not familiar with SharePoint framework, is the fact that this file, this SPPKT file, actually contains all of the assets. It contains all of the JavaScript files. It contains all of the manifest files and, and all of those stuff. So everything is automatic. I can send that file to any of my customers and say, install that to your tenant and you're good to go. Super easy, super uh, convenient experience as well. Now, we have the solution available. Now we need to actually take that available in the Outlook web access. So let me actually go to a one uh, email in here. Let me go to my add-ins uh, functionality. Let me actually get the path to the folder. Uh, let me actually open up a folder one more time. So I actually get the manifest location. That's my manifest location for this file, which we, by the way, create automatically for you as well. So you don't have to worry about how do I create the manifest. We create it for you with the default settings. So now if I go to the Outlook uh, settings in my tenant, my applications at a Add from file, I can upload my application manifest file, install that as a using the site loading during the preview time frame, and that then means that I can actually start my application, which is actually automatically hosted from the SharePoint um, and 
super easy, super convenient way of implementing uh, add-ins. Oh, and well, that worked really well. And then I did a mistake. I'm not going to spend too much time on investigating. Uh, we are in a preview time frame. I will need to double check what did I actually do wrong, and I know what I did wrong. Uh, so I actually used a wrong manifest file. Let me actually fix that so I will prove you that the things are working properly. So let's do that one more time. It's not going to take too long. Like I don't have too much time on my belt anymore because I promised to do stuff in 15 minutes. There we go. Let's close. That wasn't necessary, but let's get the application manifest file one more time in. And uploading from a file. And I uploaded the wrong file. That was the problem. Let's install that. There we go. And let's get my application available. And now it's getting hosted. And there we go. Welcome to Office, extending Office with custom business extensibility. There's the context. Uh, I'm accessing the email address uh, where I'm actually there. Uh, you can do some level of a configuration as well, and everything will be uh, available for you. Again, super convenient, automatically hosted. You can take advantage of things. You can get access on the Office JS, uh, so the, the JavaScript SDK from the implementation really easily as well. But I think that's pretty much from my side. Like I said, we do have a tutorial. Uh, we are more than willing uh, to get your feedback on this one. There's uh, multiple people in the Office Add-ins uh, Engineering who would be highly interested in getting your feedback on this one as well, because this definitely is not a SharePoint specific thing. This is an Outlook and, and Office Add-ins uh, Engineering investments uh, mainly. Um, and uh, for SharePoint specific stuff, uh, we do have an issue list uh, in the SP DevDocs issues where we would love to have your input. Uh, so github.com SharePoint SP DevDocs issues, where we would love to have your feedback, your input, your suggestions related on uh, things which you might be finding uh, from the solution. But that's it from my side for now. So uh, hopefully you find that interesting uh, and it's a useful thing for you as well. Thank you. Maybe before we move to Kim, just to be in point of fact, this is not going to replace uh, the, the SaaS level implementations of add-ins. This is definitely an add-on uh, tool for your tool belt. Uh, so basically designed for enterprise developers and, and let's say system integrators who implement uh, enterprise uh, extensibility for Outlook and, and Office uh, as well. So you easily can then get uh, deployed your stuff, uh, but there's obviously still will be applications which are web hosted applications like let's say GitHub or let's say Trello. And if you want to extend any of those ISV solutions within your within your uh, Office add-ins or in your Outlook, the model still remains exactly the same as in the past. But I think that's it for now. Uh, please give us feedback uh, and let's jump back on Kim's uh, screen. Great, thanks, Vesa. I think we had a, a question or two maybe posted to the chat, so if you can uh, keep an eye on the yeah. chat there, Vesa. I'll follow up on those. Too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Uh, really cool to see the in this integration with uh, the SharePoint framework and Office add-ins. Like Vesa said, just a, an, yet another way that you can build Office add-ins in addition, in addition to the ways you've already been able to build them previously. Um, also really cool to see the direction that things are heading in with the M365 developer experience in this um, greater effort on our part to make developing across the various Microsoft workloads a seamless experience um, versus um, feeling like everything is a little bit different. So really cool to see where things are headed there.